P50 Plus started um, when I came back from the diaspora. I've been in the Canadian diaspora for a long time. And I came back and then my mother fell sick. And we really didn't have the resources or the um, care that we needed to support her in, uh, in her location. So it got me thinking that we actually need help, that we need a support system for the elderly. And I was thinking of so many other things like, oh, maybe a care home or a in-care home or something. Then it occurred to me that actually we could have an association like it operates in the States, which I'm a member, which is called the AARP, that we could actually set something like that up they will start bringing all our service providers for the elderly together and also uh, pushing the cause for the older community. That's one reason. That was one of the major reasons that started NARP 50 Plus. Another one was when I was trying to find something to do and I realized that after 50, it's very difficult to get employment. There's definitely what I'll call ageism in brackets. So I thought to myself, there's an issue here. After 45 in Nigeria, you tend not to be able to get employment. Most of the time you have to start your own business, do something you like and start a second career. And that also buttressed my uh, passion to start NARP 50 plus. I'll tell you it's been very difficult passing the message across because we're a new initiative. I really wish we could have all the 33 million members. For example, AARP that we have fashioned after, they have 38 million members. They are the largest lobbying bloc in America. They talk about healthcare and issues that relate to their members. But it's been difficult getting across to members because it's a new initiative, we're not as um, the um, uh, level, the, the way to transmit information is very difficult. We've done online, one-on-one -on -one referral. So what we are looking for is our audiences, big, large audiences, where we can capture a big amount, a number of people. But it's been a bit difficult, it's been a challenge, but we know that it's possible. why we're here is also to be a voice to shout and to shout as loud as possible these statistics that you're telling us that the people over 50 and over especially the elderly those that are even in the 75 bracket year bracket are really suffering first of all there's loneliness there's isolation there's poverty and then there's also health issues so the way we feel we can make an impact is to become a, 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 a rallying point, a voice where we can actually bring issues to bear to, and let people understand this is what is happening. Right now, the statistics you are telling us is because you have done the research. Most people are not aware. A lot of focus is on the youth, which is understandable. The youth to make 51%, but those youth too will become old. So what we're planning to do, or what we're trying to do, is create a platform now, so that as we are aging, as people are moving into that age bracket, things are already in place that will take care of them. Right now, there's nothing. So what NERP is trying to do is bring about awareness, shout as loud as possible, get as many members as possible, partner with as many people as possible to get that word out that look, come, Let's become a voice. Let's come together and become a voice so that we lay a platform ready for others to come in as they age. The government, for me, I feel the government cannot do everything. That's why we have quasi government like us, non governmental organizations and charities like us. That's where we have to start looking at. The government cannot do everything. 
But what we can do is to be a lobbying bug for the government or to the government, you understand? So you find out that a lot of things are, we are handled on a charity basis, on a charitable basis, on a non-governmental basis, because we know, we do appreciate that the hands of the government are tied. So what I think will be a good scenario will be a partnership with government. And a partnership will go with government will, I think will bring in a lot of integrity into any social service that they want to give the elderly if they partner through us or partner through other organizations. So I believe that partnering with the government to bring about integrity and direct service delivery to the end user will be a better path. We don't have any partnership with government, but we have identified some government that have social development agenda and we've written to them. We are aware of one that has actually done it in the past for the elderly in one of the southwestern states and we're really writing uh, proposals, sent our proposals to them and we're hoping that they will see the value we bring to the table. The, tr the truth is that most people do not un see the value that, oh, what is it, what is this all about? But the value is there. All we need is sit down with the government and tell them that these are our concerns, this is what we want to do. Whether it's a grant, or whether it's um, whatever you want to give us, it will end up in the hands of the end user. And that is why partnering is what we've been shouting about. And that is where we can also get the greatest audience. So you can imagine if a state, let's say a state like Lagos State now, we send a proposal to them. Let's help our elderly go on BRT free. Let us give them a card that we will do it. We'll handle it because that's our passion. We don't want the bureaucracy of the state governments or whatever that comes into it. You can imagine the impact that will be on the citizens in Lagos. They'll be so happy. Ah, the elderly, they have a card. You can go on BRT. Even if it's at a discount, you can move from one place to the other. Once you have, even if it's an age, they decide that, okay, 65 or 70 or so. We can always uh, deliver that directly to the end user without the bureaucracy of governance. The hustle is real. Running a charity in Nigeria, the hustle is real. Ours is even, uh, how do I say, more <laughs> difficult because we run on subscription. And we expect, which is what has been, what I've been used to from where I have lived for a while. So being on subscription is a bit more difficult because you are telling people that do not even have some money, you know, that feel, oh, well, where is the money coming from to even pay a subscription? So what we try to do is to tell them that, look, it's for a larger good. It's for us to band together and to make life much better for our community, for our age group. It's been good. We have close to a thousand members, but you can imagine if we had millions of members, what we can do, what we can achieve together. You know, there are even the urban, we have the, and it cuts across all economic classes. So we have yam sellers, we have food vendors, and we have the professors, we have senators. It cuts across all classes of society. I will start with the benefits because we've had, like even in our short um, space of operations, we've had over 50 members enjoy loans that they would never have gotten through a bank. So we are also promoting financial inclusion for that cadre of people that are between 50 and 70, they are in their productive years, but need a little bit of financing. We have done that. So that is one benefit that you get. It's not that we give it out just like that. There's accountability. We make sure that you are doing it, you're using it for a productive thing or you have the means to pay back. 
So we've had doctors use it, we have nurses, we've had food vendors, we've had yam sellers, we've had Okada driver and taxi driver access that communal uh, facility. We also have healthcare. Healthcare is big. So we have companies like Mikio that give discounts. We have uh, hospitals all over. We also partner with HMO. Then we have Glow. Although it's we have the Glow, the enterprise rate that our members can use. So we are looking at everywhere the we spend our Naira, which is huge on healthcare. Huge on uh, I think a lot. What is very attractive is that access to loan. In Nigeria, I find out that there's an insatiable demand for loan. Every, everybody wants a loan, but we have to be very careful. Because we know it's not that we have so much financing, but whatever we get, we try and use it for our members. Also, we have for the high net worth that want to join, they have the lounge access, they have customized services, so maybe they are traveling or they need a cook, they need a driver, they can call us, whatever they need, we are there as a service provider for them. We try and look for then home care. Some of them may need home care, they may want a physiotherapist. We make sure that whoever they, we send them to, they will get a discount and not the normal prices. we've done is to have a cooperative but we also haven't had success with the banks we've been trying to reach out to some banks if they're listening we're open to them there are some banks bank accounts some banks have bank accounts for the elderly but I think we can also bring more value if we partner with them but they still haven't uh, we've reached out to a few banks then we're reaching out we're looking at areas like data, areas where TV, like DSTV, you know, wherever they spend it, we're, reach, we're trying to reach out. But what we've discovered is that you need, in Nigeria, you need to know the decision maker. If you do not know the decision maker, it's difficult to get access and to get instant, um, instant results. So we use, like, we're using this medium to shout out to a lot of service providers. You can help us, it will be nice. We have a petrol station, Pinnacle Petrol Station has been on board with us from day one, but they have few stations. So we've already tried to replicate that with Total, Mobile, and then Wando, but it's still been a bit difficult. So you can see if we can even get little discounts for, our, for those that are senior citizens that can get discounts on petrol, on kerosene, on diesel. Little, we know that the margins are slim, but sometimes this also may act as their CSR, you know. But we are sending out applications, proposals every day to um, corporations, to enterprises to partner with us. Because really, in society, government can't do everything. They can't. They can give out grants and we use it judiciously. It can give out a support and will stretch it even beyond how it would have been spent if it was passed through a ministry or the red tape uh, bureaucracy. So that's why we set out NERP. We are still young, but we are hoping that government, either state government, or federal government, or local government will partner with us, even on a you know even on a pilot scheme. Let's even try this out that the elderly in this state can ride the bus free. How do they identify them? But we've all had, we've, we have that template ready. It's just for us to roll it out. That is one of our advocacy mandates because we found out that a lot of elderly or those that have retired have been, maybe they haven't judiciously managed their pension or understand their pension. And we've had, we have two members right now that we are fighting their case on a pro bono basis because their, the, the employer was deducting the pension but wasn't remitting it. So when he retired or he resigned or left the work, they paid a little bit. But right now, 390000 is still outstanding. So we've asked a lawyer to help. 
Uh, we also ask, um, we have members that are lawyers, so we've reached out to them to help with pro on a pro bono basis for that. In fact, one of the members that joined was actually looking for legal help when he stumbled on our website and he registered. And he now asked me, this is what's happening. I need my pension. I haven't been paid. How do we help? So we are taking up that case right now to help. The, the other reason uh, why pensions, I think, is a, a bit of an issue is because the profit in pension is an issue. The, you know, the pension, the PFAs, they have to, how do I say it, revert back to their stakeholders, their shareholders. Their shareholder value is there. The margins are thin. So it's a, a bit of a challenge to, on their end. So I feel that government should have a way of ensuring that profit is taken out of pension management, one way or the other. How they'll do it, they need to, you know, strategically look at how it's done in other areas where the, the profit that is expected to be made out of a pension fund uh, management should be at least reduced or eliminated or there should be an avenue, maybe another organization. For example, I know uh, this, we have CPP, Canada Pension Plan, that is not managed on a, uh, well, in my own uh, belief on a profit-making basis. It's a government, you know, real done on a social uh, welfare basis. So I think there has to be a balance for pension. Those are the things we are concerned about. Just as we are talking about it now, yeah, we, we, we are shouting out in the media, take profits out of pensions. Then we'll be able to see more uh, transparency in the system. So the high net worth individuals, most of the time, uh, the way we approach them is really based on um, on their sympathy, on the fact that look, you all these benefit, all these discounts are not really a huge amount. You know, it's not that you can't afford to live life and even pay extra. But what you are doing is you are keen into an association where we can transfer a bit of wealth to those that actually need it more than you do. But apart from that, they enjoy the lounge, the free lounge, and um, they have a higher insurance coverage. So we have a group plan that we have, every member is under a group plan, uh, covered by FBN insurance. So they have a higher coverage on that. They also have higher access to the uh, higher amount of loans. But well, most of the high net worth individuals that have joined have joined because they understand they want the movement to survive. They want us to uh, use it to help the less less privileged within the association. We run events. We run events. We had an event at the Canon DBC where a physiotherapist came. Um, to show them how to show our members how to fall properly, you know. So even I learned a lot that you don't fall for you fall on the side, you know, so that you avoid more injuries. So we, that was a good one. We also had an event where we talked about uh, where they took free health medicals, right, so that they'll know. And there was there are two three people that actually discovered that they were a bit on the risky side of their health and we asked uh, them to follow up with their doctor. So we are looking at partnering with others that are doing things uh, in that uh, sphere. I've, what I've realized is that there are so many pockets of different organizations, charities, and companies that are doing things for the elderly, but we need to be cohesive, we need to collaborate so that we can be impactful in that area. And you see that elder care is uh, quite can be very very um, is rewarding number one and it's also profitable you know because a lot of people need what we're looking at is 
having be, becoming big, having a retirement village, you know, things like that where people can live well and they can keep each other company and things like that. You know, but a lot of it is those are the dreams we have, but reality is also different. We have partnership with Jero Care. Jero Care is um, one that goes into the house, to, into your home to take care of you, and um, you don't have to leave the home to get medical checkups and all. And we also have a partnership with Mikure. They also have that same arrangement as well, where you can go in. They even have, they even have an app that, well, they said they will help sort of customize for our members, those that are technically savvy. Uh, we have with Glow, you know, we have quite a number of partnerships, so many. We have close to uh, over a hundred. In fact, we recently signed with DHL. You know, we are looking at. Uh, so many partners that can come on board and the ones that will impact directly so we have so those that sell gas uh, we have hotels we have pharmacies pharmacies are very good because most pharmacies are very good with their service delivery they will deliver in the house we have mymedicine.com so we have quite a number and we even have people that sell fabrics we have I signed up with somebody that does makeup and Gilly, you know. So this, anywhere we spend an IRA, we tend to go and get a uh, discount. My vision for NERP is that it will be a, a household name uh, like it is abroad, where you talk about AARP and everybody knows about it. Uh, I want a situation where Somebody turns 50 and the next thing they are saying is, ah, you had better become a member of NARP, that kind of thing. I'm hoping that will be on everybody's lips. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to do much more, bring more value to, um, that, to our community, to the elder, elder community. Hoping that we'll be able to change the mindset of people towards the elderly and also towards that, those that are over 50. That we are not useless. There's a lot we have to bring to society and to the economy. I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that. And uh, when it comes to reaching the rural uh, areas and those that don't have access to um, the internet, it's been a challenge. Um, we have been bootstrapping, but the thing is, we have people on the ground. We also tell our members to reach out to members. We are also hoping that we'll have chapters. So we'll have different chapters in different areas and they can run with their chapter, and their program, how they feel will benefit them in that locality. So that's my prayer, that we'll have chapters in all areas, all states of Nigeria, and uh, everybody will be able to participate one way or the other and make life much better for everyone that is over 50.